Okay, so um, I wanted to go over this. This is basically the U uh, United States uh, Stamps and Duties Act. Okay, um, this is a book. If you don't have, I would uh, pray that you would get it. Um, you can get it from Amazon. And let me tell you something. If you go to Amazon and you do not type in the exact words, United States Stamp Duties, it won't come up. It's going to pop up a different book. Make sure it looks like this because they put one out that looks that has just about the same except it stamps with an S. Okay. Um, we have not found where this, uh, where this act was ever done away with. And uh, this act was uh, 1862. So um, this is basically the same act that they threw off the... Uh, you know the um, Tea Party there in Boston uh, revolted against um, <clears throat> as soon as they uh, won the American Revolution in their last uh, uh, battle which was a civil uh, claimed to be the Civil War where they brought all over the Catholics and you got to understand the Catholics were have been trying to take over uh, the Baptists uh, since they started pretending that they were us uh, the church and so uh, this is the act of Congress that they passed um, where they put this uh, uh, this act on us and it basically states that you got to have stamps on everything this includes liquor um, and it's going to go into that uh, about the stamps that when you still today that you see on top of liquor uh, and different things like this so I, su I suggest you read this um, a lot of people's process uh, the reason that they're having issues is because of this right here because they're not following this act right here then they don't know it um, you buying land anything that you buy any contract that you have is states in here uh, that agreements or contracts other than those sp specified in this schedule any uh, appraisement of value or damage uh, are for any other purposes for uh, every uh, every sheet of or piece of paper upon which either of the same shall be written five cents five cent stamp must be put on every sheet of paper so okay so when y'all bring a claim or anything like that are y'all putting five cents uh, claiming damage no you're not so why would they you know uh, you need to read what the uh, also goes into how you're supposed to cancel these stamps uh, over here uh, in section this would be I think section 99 something like that right here initial uh, uh, of his name uh, and the date upon it um, which is the same shall be attached or used so that the same may be uh, not uh, again be used okay uh, denouncing the, the deposit okay so they uh, they're signing these uh, from the bottom left to the top right you can read about that in here um, bills of exchange a lot of people oh except for value except well did you did you put the amount because a value determines that you're doing uh, a bill of exchange determines foreign letters of credit determines how much uh, the stamp your uh, act you're supposed to uh, obey are you doing that oh you're not oh well the, you know don't say that it doesn't work when you're in violation of the act of congress uh so this is a real important book it's not very thick i'm not going to take the time to read it all out uh <clears throat> but i will take the time to uh call it to your attention and uh may the wise be uh, aware uh may the spirit of wisdom be upon you may the spirit of knowledge be bless you and may the spirit of might empower you uh, by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, by the Baptist uh, minister, uh, servant of uh, the Most High, uh, Yahashua, Yehovah Elohim. Uh, blessed be his name. You get to the Skype group by uh, getting the welcome, the welcome email shows you how to get to the Skype group. You really don't have to search it. You, there's a join link that will take you there right away. Tanya, how do you get that welcome letter? Well, uh, you get sent out every two weeks on Sunday, or you can go to the Yahoo group to the file section, and in the main folder, it's the welcome dot text. Tom, why don't you put a welcome document up on uh, the eConcurrent site also? 
Actually, it is there. It's also in the main folder. The welcome doc text is there also. Okay. I'll, I'll double check and make sure it is, but I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Okay, I don't know whether you all got the latest the document that I put up there, non-UCC versus UCC Rev 1A. This is a one-page document that will basically tell you how the money system in this country is working. Pretty simple. Straightforward. It even talks about how the Bar Association, uh, and you could throw this right in front of their face and say, okay, now prove me wrong. I'm going to come in with this as an affidavit. Show you that basically here's the money system that's operated out here. We have UCC contract trust. Every item that we have, a driver's license, a certificate of title to the vehicle, a marriage license, uh, the certificate of live birth, the Social Security account, they're all UCC contract trust. Okay? They're overseen by the Treasury Department. They are the overseers of these UCC contract trusts. They're monitored also by the IRS, the internal revenue system of the country. Okay? There's the fraudulent <coughs> IRS out there that is basically trying to collect taxes on the usury money system that's out here, and they always have to send you a bill. The contractors that we have, and we basically, it's like going out and building a house. You go out and first get a loan. That's the foundation for the building of that house. You have a loan with so many credits in that loan. Then you find a contractor. You're going to have to give so many of those credits over to the contractor. He's going to go out and get a performance and a payment bond, a laborer's payment bond, to put in there as sureties that basically uh, the performance side of the contract gets paid and the laborers get paid. These two bonds combined together are called a fidelity bond. And you can look up all the prices on the fidelity bond out there, uh, and they will all come up with $11.2 million for a nine-digit fidelity bond. That means that there is essentially at least $1.12 million in credits per those uh, $11.2 million in bonds. It may have the full value depending on the time frame of those bonds that have been in circulation. Okay? But you will have at least the 11 point or the 1.1 million sitting there. Now, the contractor goes out and he buys two by four cement, uh, all different things. So he puts debt money in the circulation, Federal Reserve dollars, which is a shadow debt piece of paper, promises to pay the bill when the credits are demanded. This is the national debt of the country is the Federal Reserve dollars that are in circulation. Now, the contractor turns around and sends you a bill. All you have to do on that bill is acknowledge it as a bill of credit, endorse it, and return it back to them, thereby releasing the credits that you are holding in your bank account of credits that are sitting down as the foundation for this house of 
construction house of paper money. You are the owner of this thing. You are the responsible party for the whole process. You argue in a court or anything like that, and basically the attorneys and the judges will turn around and file service charges through the bankruptcy court system against your UCC construction contract trust in the form of an embezzlement. Because they never really did give you any just services. It's like basically the contractor's brother-in-law comes out and talks to him for two hours and then turns around and charges two hours of labor against that construction project when he didn't do a damn thing. You can turn around and file claims in the courts. They never issue a 1099. Why? Because they are not reporting their taxes that they are basically obligated to do. Most courts come out and charge you, but they never give you a bill. What is the value of this charge? Give me the bill so that I can set it off. People are held in prison right now, basically on charges. That basically there is no bill associated with it. No bill, there can be no charge, no debt. Therefore, you have no contract. It's that simple. People are arguing the wrong stuff. All these patriots out here have been barking up the wrong goddamn tree. They've got to finally get their head out of their ass and admit that they're wrong. I've admitted that I've been wrong numerous times over the last eight years or whatever and had to try and go a different direction to find out where the truth is at because I was going the wrong direction. Good. Walking up to the Grand Canyon and say, hey, I'm not going to take another step forward. I'm going to end up down the bottom of the pit. I'm going to turn around and go a different direction. I'm not that damn stupid. But most of these damn patriots out here continue, and they jump right off the damn thing, right into the canyon, and get themselves into trouble. Because they're too damn arrogant and egotistical and believe all of these guys out here. Oh, yeah, Martin Buse, this guy. Oh, yeah, this guy over here, this guy over here. He got people out. No consistency. There's only one lawful way to go about this. And when you do your non-UCC filing in the private, because the states cannot take a non-UCC, they can only deal with commercial paper. The counties can't even deal with non-UCCs. to put an official number on them. Now, you can go in and put private records into the county, but the county is not going to put a number on it for you. So you do, you are a government. We the people are the true government of this country. We are a principality, especially when you know who you are and you have 
your birthing record, your de jour birthing record, hospital or Bible entry, and you have your baptismal record because baptism can only be given to a living person. So now that's a second proof that you are alive. Now you are a prince on the water and a prince on the land. Now you are an international organization of two and also known as an individual principality. Your own little kingdom. You have to claim ownership. You have to fire the con contractors that you have building these damn fraudulent houses out here. Terminate the contract. Liquidate all the two-by-fours, the cement pile that's sitting there, uh, all the nails and everything else. Sell them off. Get the credits. Turn around and put them in the right place and then go out and start living your life the right way. <coughs> but get out of the commercial system. Then these judges, these bar association judges, they can never charge you. They can't go in because they have no access to your assets any longer, to your construction projects. I'm taking 11 traffic tickets in. I met with the sheriff Thursday. He came out. I went over all these documents with him, most of them. Okay, I haven't gone over this latest one. I'll give him a copy of that tomorrow uh, when I meet with him. When we take these traffic tickets that I have that I've endorsed as bills of credit and coming back into the clerk of the court's office and claiming all of the charge credits that are charged against the performance bond and all of the appearance bond values that are on those tickets that are basically uh, draws against the payment bond and I'm coming in to claim all those credits to be set off and given back to me thereby canceling the debt that basically is out there on the Federal Reserve side of the system and demanding from that clerk of that court, a 1099-C for each one of those, showing that the debt has been canceled for that value. Total on my 11 tickets is going to be somewhere around $6,700. The sheriff is going to meet with me. We're going to go up to the clerk of the court and give those to him. I've been indoctrinating my sheriff making him aware of what's going on so that basically he can take his bills and go down and do a bill of credit, acknowledgement, endorsement, and return and pay his property taxes, his houses, his uh, house mortgage, whatever, his uh, utility bills. All of those right now. Now, with our receipts, even after we come out of the system, we will turn around and send all of our receipts in because they're receipts of credit. We will send those into the IRS. I'll find out what IRS office it is, and I think it could even be our local IRS office and have them basically process those receipts for credits over to, through our 98 series number, over to the du jour treasury. We don't need to get them back. We'll have them sent to the treasury. When we get out of this, we will get an unlimited debit card or somewhere in that process 
from the de jure treasury against the labor assets that are held in the de jure treasury in Philadelphia. We will get a green uh, passport, a non-UCC green passport, a greenback. We will be operating under St. Patrick's green robe of protection. Somebody's got a mic on or something. Study that document. I mean, it's pretty simple. Basically, every little kid basically built houses of cards, took a 52 deck of cards, and tried to build as many little triangle houses as they could when they were a kid. Well, I don't know. Most kids nowadays, basically, they can't get them away from those little iPods or whatever the hell they got. Game Boys or whatever. And see, your signature is basically a shadow of your autograph. And this whole commercial money system is a shadow of, it's a shadow government, it's a shadow money system. And we can turn the light on and basically poof, it starts going away. And that's all we're doing when we go to the UCC Contract Trust Department as the owner with our non-UCC, our 926 form, and basically our Certificate of Live Birth, DD-214, and a uh, uh, Social Security card endorsed as bills of credit for full liquidation of those uh, con. UCC contract trust, they have to terminate those because we're the owner and we have our non UCC in hand. Yet we, it's not going to, the courts are not going to help us. We fully now recognize that, that the Bar Association ain't going to give us any remedy whatsoever because they've all taken a oath to basically uh, deprive us of this right. That's the oath that they've taken. We know that by having a bar card, they are in total opposition. They're in insurrection against the Constitution. Because having that bar license is one of the items that is in uh, the Constitution, Article 1, Section 10. No state shall issue a title of nobility. But yet, the states of and all these corporations, commercial corporations of the state are issuing bills of credit, titles of nobility, bills of attainer, letters of marquee, depriving you of contract settlements. They are violating everything that is addressed in the de jure constitution, Article 1, Section 10, right to the letter. And you try and argue that in one of their courts, and they're going to run right over you as much as possible. The way to settle it is basically you go to the cashier. You get it into them. And then you're done. Now, if they continue to harm you after that, you've got remedy. The 3949A, the 1399-909 form, and 
the Treasury UCC Contract Trust Department because per volume one of the Statutes of Large, Congress, the Fifth Congress, Section 2, Chapter 49, 50, and 51, addresses the fact that if the courts do not settle the debt, you are to turn to the Treasury. Those items were put in the place because of the traitor Alexander Hamilton when he set up the damn Department of the Treasury in order to bring in the commercial bank known as the First National Bank, a foreign bank, into this country to operate with currency out here because Congress would not get off their ass and properly issue the proper amount of currency into the system. Yeah, Alexander Hamilton was still working for the damn uh, East India Company. Okay, go over that document. Do you have any questions? Okay. Floor's open right now. Nobody have any questions? Okay, Patrick, I have some. Go ahead. There? Okay. Yeah, uh, so Okay, so we're not going to go to the bankruptcy court. We're just going to go to the uh, IRS. We're this. going to go to the IRS Technical Support Division, care of the... Treasury UCC Contract Trust Division. Right. And then uh, we're going to do those endorsements on the back, just like you, uh, those examples. Just like I just posted up. up here the last couple of days. Okay. I sent and mine out yesterday by express mail. I was going to do it by registered mail. Okay. So uh -huh. I changed that uh, over to express mail. Uh, yesterday morning early, and then basically I turned around and I uh, re, uh, printed on to each one of the endorsements. I also put that express mail number uh, on each one of the endorsements on the back of my certificate of live birth, DD214, and Social Security card also so that they're attached. Now when you send this out, either under express mail or registered mail or even certified mail that is a mailed contract a contract by mail okay. so they're under a contract I would rather overnight it rather than registered mail because it takes so long to get there it um, could yeah it takes so, over a week to get there well it least, may or may not okay it all depends I've had some registered mail go root right through uh -huh. okay depend okay. on where it's sitting and uh, how the linkage is and whether it makes hand-to-hand -hand delivery through the process immediately but basically it have to sit in a vault overnight or something like that it may not get picked up first thing in the morning so it may miss a day yeah so that's right. why I want express mail to uh, basically make sure Hopefully, it gets there tomorrow. Uh, at least that's what they're telling me it's supposed to. Well, I know it's on its way to D.C. right now. It left Des Moines at, uh, uh, about 7 o'clock or 9 o'clock this morning. So should be in D.C. right now. And hopefully, it's to the delivery uh, station first thing in the morning. Okay, I got one other comment. Um, um and it's having a problem getting their um, 98 number. Need to get hold of Yasherman. I uh, got a hold of him. I did his process. It worked right off the bat. So, um, 
just that comment there. If anybody needs that 98 number and they can't get it, get a hold of him. And that's it. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah, Patrick. I went over that pack, your package that you made a zip file, and it really is complete. I don't really have any questions on it. Uh, I'll, I'll probably get into printing it tomorrow. I may have a few, but right now I don't. Yeah, see, all these people that are held in prison, okay, if they're listening to this, basically, you need to have somebody out there get the charges and find out what the value of the charges. If not, if the court refuses to give you a charge, then you have grounds for appeal in that basically this lower court is not supplying you with a valid bill so that the charges can be set off. Give me the bill. Just like in the Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Where's the contract? Where's the bill? If there's no bill, there's no charge. Pretty damn simple. Now these guys are operating under false arrest and imprisonment. Hey, Patrick, this is Steve. In in my situation, instead of the court giving me a bill, like a month or so later, the county revenue services sends you a bill, which is a whole, you know, different. No, it isn't different. Okay. You just accept it, and based, or you acknowledge it. You don't accept anything. Yeah. You accept something, you accept the liability, the obligation. When you acknowledge that what they are sending you a bill, mm -hmm. that it is a bill of credits because it's a draw against the surety, the bonds that are out there against the instrument that they are writing that against. Either the uh, contract you had with the utility company, whether it's the Social Security contract, whether it's the driver's license contract, whether it's the certificate of title to your vehicle, whether it's your marriage contract, whatever. Yeah, I understand. Child support. Basically, it's a draw up against the credits that are on that marriage contract. Why did you need to have a marriage contract? You didn't. But you got a contractor, the state involved, now they have the bonds that are to pay for the child support or for the support of the missing partner in the marriage. See how this flow diagram fits all situations? Now, when you come out of the system, you'll be operating in the du jour. You'll be paying your bills as you go. And you won't be putting funny money into circulation. The contractor won't because you won't have a contractor involved into the process. Now, whenever you do one of these, uh, bills of credit and send it back, you also have to demand from them that they send you back a 1099-C showing that that debt has been canceled. If they refuse that, then you just inform the IRS that basically, hey, I submitted this in, basically, and I did not get the 1099-C. Go check these guys out. There must be some IRS, some tax fraud involved here.
Patrick, ordinarily that 1099-C would be a taxable item, would it not? No. Look at it. Does the debtor owe any repayment of this? No. Your debtor is your fictional person, is your shadow person. When you release the debt, basically now you've canceled the debt. So there can be no tax. Understand. Yeah. I have a situation where my mother died with a mortgage in place, and the responsibility for settling that falls to me. Now, I've got her birth certificate, I've got her death certificate, I've got her social security card, her marriage license. Uh, I've you got get yourself of out of the system first. Now, for her mortgage, you have power of attorney, okay, or you have executorship over her estate, right? I have both. Okay. You can come in and basically for the bill or for the mortgage, you can get that mortgage closure bill and you do it as a uh, bill of credit set off. You acknowledge it as such and you endorse it and send it back to the bank. Now, the come bill on, that people, sending... think about this. This is too damn simple. Mm -hmm. The bill that they're sending monthly is interest only. How do I get that Get payoff one now? bill. Okay, well, I want a payoff bill. All right. There you go. And then you basically acknowledge it as a bill of credit, endorse it, basically her performance and payment bond that the bank as the contractor had to have over that housing construction contract trust, the funds, are, the credits are sitting there. All you have to do is release them. And that goes back to the CFO of the bank? It goes back to the bank. I don't care where it goes. You run a copy of it after you sign it. You put your in acknowledgement, endorsement, and uh, return and demand for a uh, 1099-C on the back of that or on the front of it, and then you sign it and date it and send it back to where the bill came from. The CFO of those banks will end up getting that document. Mark my word. And basically, they all know. They're the Scottish Freemasons, and they know when their hands have just been tied. Because you just turned the light on and exposed them, and now they have to settle the matter. They can no longer operate in the shadows. Have a problem with that? No problem. And that requires nothing in advance. No, no pre filings, no UCC ones out there. All of well, that I would get my non UCC uh, registered mail, non UCC, in place tomorrow morning. God damn it, I told you this month or a couple weeks ago. That's how damn important that damn non UCC is because it establishes that you are not a commercial person. The court knows this. They won't touch me. I can go in there and shout my head off at them, call them every fucking name under the sun, and they still can't touch me. Because I'm a non-UCC person. I'm not a UCC person 
that doesn't know who the fuck he is. See the power of that non-UCC? Absolutely. Okay. You're an American now. You're not a commercial American. A shadow of the living. Anybody else? Come on, people. Okay, I got another question. Okay. Okay, I've got two uh, certificates of live birth. Should I send them both in or send one in and send one to the bank? Why would you send one to the bank if you're sending one into uh, the UCC contract trust division? You're shutting the thing down, so basically the one going to the bank, which is probably going to take longer to process, uh, is going to run into a brick wall because you sent the other one into the treasury to shut the thing down. Okay, so it's quicker to shut it all down. I would think so. Okay. That's all I need to know. But if you want to stay in the system, go to the bank. No, I don't basically, want to be in the system. Yeah, to be but basically, you're going to probably run into some headaches with the, depending on the bank that you're dealing with. Because they want to try and keep you under a UCC uh, system and not under the non-UCC system. Thank you. Yeah. See, they can really... These banks can only deal with the commercial. Even though you think you're going in there and getting a private bank account and everything else, you're still coming in with an EIN number. That EIN number is still in the commercial world. The 98 series number basically is, a, is an interface. That is the boatsman going from heaven to hell. Or from hell to heaven, whatever. Patrick? Yeah. If we got an ongoing court case, can I turn a non UCC in on that to the file it with them? Well, you find out what the bill is in the court case and settle it. First, huh? Okay. Yeah. Basically, hey, I want the bill. What what would it take to settle this court case? There's nothing out of your back pocket. You get the bill, and then you acknowledge it's a bill of credit, and you release the credits that are under the surety bonds. See? Just saying. Understand. Okay. Thank you. See, even St. Paul knew this one when he said, settle with thy adversaries, never get in the court. Because, see, okay. they were using the commercial monetary system way back then because they'd already killed Caesar off. Caesar wanted to operate with uh, labor dollars in the non-UCC system. All, all of these moves in court, Patrick, would still be stronger if we do our non-UCC first. Non -UCC first. Get that filed and then do all these other moves. Right. It would be a lot stronger, yes. But right. basically, you don't need to sit around and wait for them. Get the bill and basically do the endorsement of the bill. Okay. Don't fuck don't. around. Okay. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Was there somebody who wanted to ask a question? Oh, that was me saying, okay. I understand okay. that. I have some people who who have the problem, and they 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 probably should do the, the uh, get the bill first. While no, they you are. don't tell, tell them that, Tom. They can do either one. Get right. the goddamn bill set off. Right, and then do their non-UCC thing. Okay, got it. I do not have a baptismal certificate. Would a confirmation certificate do? Go get rebaptized. Okay. Put a Bible entry. If you know when you were baptized, put the entry into your Bible, your family okay. Bible. Okay. Whatever. Get two witnesses to say you were baptized that day. If not, go get that rebaptized. Okay. You're still alive, aren't you? So you can get rebaptized anytime you want to. That's correct. <clears throat> then I have one but other that does not, that you, Doing that, you don't need that to get this process going to get out of a system, okay? Okay, right. Just something that needs to be done timely, but not... I would get it done so that you have your proper standing out here when you get totally out of the system. Yes. Okay, okay. And then is there anybody on this call, I'm uh, an older gentleman, I'm not computer smart, and I'm having a problem trying to get into these chats, Skypes, all this and everything. Is there somebody, if they would be able to sometime give me 15 minutes on a conversation here and maybe help me through some of this stuff. I, I understand what you're doing, and I, it's great, but I'm just having a problem um, working myself around a computer, so I'm putting a little plea out for somebody to see if I can get them irritated. Let's, let's do that right after the call. We'll, we turn the recording off. We'll discuss that. Or we'll okay. leave the recording on and discuss that. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, anybody else have a question? Comment? Yeah, I got a question, Patrick. Um, what would happen to the case once one does a acknowledgement on it from the other or the petitioner's standpoint? Would they would they just settle the I mean how does how how does the court deal with the re, the petitioner's request at that point? Petitioner's request for what? Whatever they're requesting or petitioning. Well, they they see, you, they've got a bill, okay? What? You ask. What? And basically, they're bringing a charge in against you, okay? They're petitioning the court to try and get money from you because you didn't pay the taxes. You didn't pay the mortgage. You didn't pay the utility bill, whatever. Settle with them. Settle out of court. Say, how much is the bill? Give me a bill and I will settle it with you. Okay? Would then the court dismiss the case at that point once I proved that I requested the bill, or would it be... After you settle it with them, then they have nothing to bring into that court to charge you with. They've got to shut it down. They've got to tell the court that basically this matter has been settled. Mm-hmm. Come on. Can't you think I- that one through? The other question I have is, is, if you have a different, different, they're charging different persons, 
if I'm not the creator of that, then do I have the right to use the name? Uh, if you have the power of attorney for the other person, you can basically do the acknowledgement and the endorsement and the return of that bill of credit by having the power of attorney. But you better have that copy of power of attorney. And you would do that against their account or your account? Come on. Probably their account. If you need that power of attorney, why would you have to do it against your account? Okay. okay. I don't know how dumb America is, but basically you guys are showing that basically just from the questions that are in this little group here, that fucking America is fucking dumber than a rock. Patrick, on the um, money to be deposited, for people that already have bank accounts, wouldn't you suggest that they close those bank accounts out before they when do the men, When the shadow men come, and basically then you can close those accounts down. But I would get my money out of there as soon as you know that they have received your documents. Mm-hmm. Think about this, people. This ain't that hard. I agree. What you're saying seems very simplified. I think for um, a lot of us out here listening and hearing different things and then, you know, coming to this point has to be something that, you know, the mind has to get a hold of, um, if they, especially if they don't understand how that process works. So Yeah, that's why I told you. Basically, go fill the bathtub up full of water and stick your head under there for about a half hour. And basically, if you come back out, then basically you can go on with this system. If you don't survive <laughs> for a half hour, then basically you didn't need to worry about it anymore anyway. But stop listening to all this other stuff about people wanting to go into court and fight this damn shit and not understand somebody's got a speaker on. Somebody's got a speaker on. I tried to make this thing as simple as possible. One page document tells you the whole system. Tells you how the damn bar association is out there embezzling from you. And then I tried to give you the cover letter the three endorsements, the copy of the, the UCC, non-UCC, how you put the stamp on it, how you put a certified, uh, certify it, how you do the 1096 form. I can't fucking mail it for you, though. I don't know what else I can do. And now it's up to you guys to start spreading the word. Yeah. Like, I've gone in there and I've talked to my sheriff. Basically, I've been, been hitting him up. I talked to the Secret Service. I talked to U.S. Marshals. I talked to in postal inspectors before. 
I talk to the courts. Basically, they don't want to talk to me, but they know that I'm on target. And now, with my non-UCC in place, they know that they can't touch me. And that's why I can get away with basically shouting at the top of my lung at the damn county attorney and the damn fat-ass magistrate judge, female judge, that she's not a judge. She's just a bar broker making $144,000 a year for nothing. These people don't even know how to set up their own college loans. But yet they can go out and fuck the general public embezzling money from our UCC contract trust. All these wars that we're fighting, they're commercial wars. They're not non-UCC Constitution of the United States of America wars. They're commercial wars for the bankers. Obamacare, all these damn things that they see, these codes and everything that the Congress keeps running up and the bills that they keep running up, they're commercial bills. Take the money away from them. Shut the commercial UCC contract trust down and they're dead in the water. But you're the owner. Face the fact that you are the owner. The government cannot own one fucking thing. They are just the contractor, and you can fire that contractor anytime you want to. Understand the laws of contracts. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Want me to chew their ass a little? Because I will. Got it. Thank you, Patrick. Got my stuff out, but still need to get some more out. Anybody else? Hey, Patrick, uh, I dropped some of these ideas on people, and they said, well, good luck with that. They don't even want to try. They don't even want to hear it, basically. But, you know, I'm not worried about it. Well, I don't care it. about them not hearing it. Are you yeah. going to do it, Steve? Of course. Okay. And, That's uh, all that you need to worry about. Right. You get your stuff done, and then basically you can just drop a hint. Here, I'm out of a system. You want out? All this. Right. I kind of like to drop drop bombs on people anyhow, so I don't mind trying. But I'll, I'm taking care of myself first. Okay. Hello, Patrick? Yeah. Um, the, the zip file, I, I'm using a cell phone. I don't know if I'm going to be able to open that. Is there another... Is it on the website, like in a HTML or something? It's either in eConcurrent.com slash divine in the file section there, folder 39, okay, or mm -hmm. in we the people, all one word, shareholder, underscore shareholders. That's a Yahoo group, and it's in the first file or folder in uh, the file section on that group. 
You have okay. to become is a it, member. Is it is it un, un, uh, unzipped already? No, it is not yes. unzipped. All the files are also unzipped in there. They are? Okay. They are separately, not in that particular post, but they are separately. I think they're most all in there. Okay. I may have put a couple extra or something in there, but basically, uh, for the most part, they're all there. Either zipped or unzipped, they should be there. What you need. I do have them unzipped. I do have them unzipped on my computer. I could put them up on your concurrent that way. Okay. Yeah, if you can do that, then I'll be able to uh, see what's in there. But to really so, do the you. documents, you need more than a mobile to work on. Yeah, no, I when I need to uh, when I need to print stuff up, I, I can go to my aunt's house and uh, get stuff out of my email and, and print it out. Well, if you've got a computer, if you're able to get into the internet, you've got to have a computer to be able to download those. You've got to be able to un unzip them. Then, once you get them onto a computer. Well, some mobile phones don't have that capability. That's why I'm not talking about a mobile phone, okay? Yeah, okay. A mobile phone is not a computer. You're not going to be able to download the files off onto a mobile phone. Well, what, I, what I've been doing is I'll, I'll download the files and then I'll upload them to uh, Google Drive, and then I can, like the contract for dummies and that ebook and a bunch of stuff on there. I got tons of storage on on in the cloud, so to speak, that I can upload stuff. Yeah, some of the mobiles, uh, the newer mobiles, Patrick, allow you to download and upload, but you can't do much with the files otherwise. Well, what do you do to print them? You have to go find a computer. Yeah, I gotta find a computer. I have a printer, well, but I don't. You can I, I don't know how that's I. That's what I'm saying. Why the fuck are you using a fucking phone as a fucking computer when a fucking computer is supposed to be a word processor? A basically, people don't. You can. That's you what can really fucking pisses me off. You can people use a fucking phone as a fucking computer, and a computer is a fucking phone. You can go oh, to Office Max or Staples. Huh? You can go to Office Max or Staples. You can email them, and they will print it out for you also. All right, ahead of thank time. Thank you. Yeah, there, there are many people trying to use a mobile app like, as a computer. It doesn't make sense, but that's what they're doing. Well, because I don't have Internet here. Yeah, some people may not have those. The library has Internet. You can go to the library. Yeah, you can do it at the library, too. Yep. Thank public you. library. Okay, the, the libraries are supposed to be for the public people. Right. Aren't you one of the public? I hate excuses. I can't do this because of this. I can't do this because of that. God damn, people. Take your goddamn diapers off and try and act like a grown-up person for a change. My wife has a question. Well, what is it? Hi. I, I was having technical issues. My name is Anna, and uh, I've been wanting to ask a question or two this past hour, but I was having technical difficulties. Okay. I have a question about the non-UCC. I understand how it works and all that, and I do have the templates, and I want to know who gets a copy of it. The, you do a registered mailing, okay? Right. You have to have you put the registered mail number on that UCC. You put a global stamp on that. You sign and date that global stamp. Right. Then you run a copy of that, okay, or a couple copies of it. You set those aside. You put the original uh, with the global stamp and the signature in an envelope 
and you register mail that back to yourself. You do okay. not open that. You put that into your banking record book, which is your Bible. Right. Now, how- you take the certified copies, and you can basically uh, certify them, okay, the copies, you certify them because you are now holder of that original document. Okay. Now, the only one right now that really needs to get that is going to be the UCC Contract Trust Division. The Treasury. The Treasury UCC Contract Trust Division, right? Right. Okay. You put a copy of that with that cover letter, the 926, and your endorsed documents. In your case, probably just a certificate of live birth and your Social Security card. And then basically in the letter, it tells them that basically when they come to see you, you will endorse all of your other UCC contracts over your driver's license, your bank accounts, whatever, at that point in time. Okay. How do we certify our SSN card? You don't need to certify it. Okay, because I saw an endorsement in your paperwork for the SSN. Yes. And I thought, well, oh, do we just make a copy of it and then certify yeah, it? Yeah, you just run a copy on one side of the paper, front and back of your Social Security card. So it's got the, the uh, nine-digit uh, number that's on the back of the card there also, that F whatever uh, letter, and then eight digits, Okay. Uh-huh. the sequence number, and then basically uh, you, on the back, you just do your acknowledgement and endorsement that that is a uh, bill of credit for that UCC contract trust. Great. Got it. Now, I do have a question about the uh, the bill of credit, super easy, and I do understand that we can go to the court, to the the court counter or the court uh, the court. Cashier, the clerk, cashier? Clerk of the court. Clerk of the court, so we can go there. So let me take something simple. I have my electric bill. I do an acknowledgement on that bill. I take it down to the courthouse and hand it to the... No? No. Okay. You acknowledge it, you endorse it, and basically you return it, but you demand from that utility company a 1099C also on that endorsement and you send it back to the utility company. Okay. Well, I they've have got a, a chief. They've got a chief financial officer, a Scottish Freemason in their damn system, a shadow banking agent there that basically knows that he's got to set that off. Okay. Because well, I- if he's a public utility licensed by the state, then he has to do this. Okay. Because he's operating under the UCC uh, monetary system. So would that be the same with the mortgage payoff quote? I have a payoff quote in my hot little hand, and uh, I would just send it back after I do the endorsement and so forth and ask for the 1099C. I just yeah. send that right over to them. You, you release <laughs> exactly. the credits. And basically send it back to them and demand a 1099-C showing that the debt has been canceled. Right. Great. Now, under what circumstance can we go to a licensed bank window or to the Treasury or someone else with our bill of credit? Is there ever a situation that we can go to the, the clerk of court? If you go to the UCC contract trust department and order the shutdown of all your UCC contract trust, you're not going to be doing this uh, bill of credit anymore. Cool. You will be getting a uh, credit debit card from the du jour treasury. Okay. Okay, so you'll be paying everything right off the top. You will take your receipts that you get and you can turn around and send those into the IRS and have the IRS turn around and transfer those refund credits for the receipts over to the 
does your treasury by way of your 98 series routing number. Oh, you don't awesome. need to have those come back to you. You've got a credit debit card. So what do you need to have somebody else send you other shit back? I have don't. Have sent over to the treasury. Yeah, I don't. I just need it for my transition period. But okay. yeah, I don't need that. I just have the card. <laughs> well, basically your transition period should be three days to lie in a coffin. Go play dead for three days. I know that's hard for women to be able to keep quiet for three days, but basically try it. <laughs> well, yes, that is true. That is true. Um, it sounds like none of us are that far away from getting that card, right? No, you're three days away. Three days away, that's right. Well, that's one right. day away to get that uh, registered mail back to yourself. That's to get right. that in the mail, and basically the next day you should get it back in the mail to you if you're doing yeah. your local that's post tomorrow. office. Right. Okay? And right. then as soon as you get that, then the next day you should be able to have all your documents. All you need to do is take that certified copy, and as soon as you put that in the mail, you can start doing your certified copies of your non-UCC. You don't need to wait until you get it back in the mail. Right. Okay? Yeah. So you get that in the mail, express mail, and basically then one or two days, whatever it takes there, and then the three days after that, and basically then you should be getting some relief from them, just like Jesus got resurrected on the third day. That's right. That's right. That is yeah, he exactly. didn't die. He got some of his funds, and basically, but he got all his contracts shut down. That's what right. got crucified. Right. I totally get it. Yeah. Well, this is this is awesome. So, have you done yours yet? Or are mine you- should be getting into the UCC contract trust department tomorrow morning. I'm hoping. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I didn't hear that part. You had just sent it so. Sunday. So, yeah. Very exciting. Thank okay. you so much for answering my questions. I'll let somebody else take the floor. Thank you again. Okay. You're welcome. Anybody else? Any diehard patriot that wants to argue with me? Come on forward. Uh, uh. Prove me wrong. Nope. No, that really covered it well, Pat. Well, I tried to because basically I've been down just about every road there is to put this pyramid and everything together. I think you got her ass now, we do. Now, three of us went through the bankruptcy court out in D.C., and we went through uh, the attorney's process of how they could file charges into the bankruptcy uh, to uh, uh, for their uh, supplied services against these uh, con- contract trusts. We just didn't see it fully at that point in time. Now I do. But it wouldn't have been if, I, if we hadn't have taken the time and gone through uh, the bankruptcy court in Washington, D.C., because they're the only ones that have this training module for the attorneys of how to file a service charge against these uh, contract trusts. Makes sense. I know you've had a hard road, and you've done a great, great job for all of us. Yeah, and then basically just seeing, understanding the Constitution and see what basically, like Article uh, 1, Section 10, basically they're violating everything in there, these bar, so basically they do not come under 
the Constitution whatsoever, the state of. They're not our state government. They don't, and they see then, therefore, when we come out of the system in a non-UCC capacity, they have no jurisdiction over us whatsoever. But you have to get to that point first. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in court, and they told you you don't have no constitutional rights. And they're right, because we're under a corporation. We're under a foreign insurrection state of court, bar court association, these foreign bar uh, titles of nobility. Right. Yeah, check it out. Your county attorney. Where in the Constitution of the state does it say that a county attorney has to have a bar license? It will say that they can't have a foreign title of nobility. Therefore, that county attorney is basically, they are in those offices in fraud. And that's what they're afraid of, is the people exposing them to the fraud that they're doing. Because you can turn around and run for the county attorney of that county in the lawful capacity and outseat that foreign, fraudulent county attorney. Become a man of law or a law man. Hey, Patrick, I have another question. Okay. Uh, do you think that after you get your card, you're going to, or before you get it, that they'll have you sign a non-disclosure agreement? <laughs> I'm just curious because I've heard that story I a lot. I think that they might try it. Whether they get it done, that's another thing. Yeah. He, he, Patrick addressed that in the documents he had because he, he basically stated in the, in the, in the package that he, he will continue to do this, and that's his, his right to do it. So look, look right. I'm a newcomer. I just started today, so I haven't read every, everything that he has. So I thank you very much. I think it's okay. in the cover letter in the third last paragraph. Thank you. Only if sure. they feel that I need additional protection, basically, then will I back down, that they... Okay can't supply me with the proper protection out here, then I might slow down a little. But otherwise, no, I'll shoot my mouth off as much as possible. See, I'm not an insider, okay? So it would be outright murder in my case where taking out Kennedy and Lincoln and stuff like that, they were insiders. They had inside information. Just like Martin Luther King had inside information about the system. So basically, in a way, they could get away with those murders. Because they'd all taken an oath uh, to their foreign uh, devil, the bankers. But I haven't taken any oath to any banker, so basically... Fuck them. What about as like a belligerent um, or something like that from the martial law? We're not under martial law. We're under banker's law, commercial, UCC law. You don't think it's under both? No. No, we're under banker's law, commercial banker's law. There's only two systems out here, non-commercial banking system of government and commercial banking system of government. There's two sides to every coin, right? On the two-sided coin. You can't make a coin out of three sides. <laughs> yeah. 
even though they tried to do that with the damn uh, sandwich quarters and stuff like that. They try and say it's a three-sided coin, but it isn't. It's really a two-sided coin. So you don't think the Lieber Code is in place at this point? There's good parts of the Lieber Code in place, yeah, as protection, because people don't know how to read that Lieber Code. That was out there before Lincoln, basically before the 14th, or before, before the 17, 1871 United States Corporation came into power. And really, the, United, the 1871 United States Corporation didn't come into full power until Woodrow Wilson in 1913. They were in the setup stage to get to the 1913 takeover. But the Lieber Code, no, that didn't put all this stuff into place. Um, I was referring to if when one gets out or even before about being a belligerent and not being not being peaceful and being in you know like an insurrection that to, was a lot for basically what was going on in the war in the civil war okay at that point in time you got to look at when that was put into place that really wasn't to basically control down the road. See, people, all these patriots out here use that Lieber Code, use the 14th Amendment, and they don't know how to read the damn documents and understand what they're really saying. Because they screwed it up, and they've got a screwed up mind and they refused to acknowledge that they were wrong. Hmm. I just dumped one guy off the Skype group because he said, well, the government owns everything. And I said, no, you are the owner. The government can't own anything. And then he wanted to continue to argue. I said, I ain't arguing with you any longer. Goodbye. Said, you don't want to admit you're wrong? Tough. You're wrong. Well, I, I try think... and tell you how to take control as the owner, and you don't want to do it. I see how you're saying well, owner. I don't think anyone actually owns anything if you look at the creator's No, glasses. we own the earth. Basically, that is what is said in the very beginning of the Bible. I give the earth to you. Dominion Adam. over it. Yeah, have yes. dominion. I give ownership. Dominion means ownership. Hmm. For your lifetime, while you're alive. That was to combat the devil, which is the corporations, to where they try and come in and claim ownership. Yeah. Well, we're God unto ourselves. Christ said we're capable of all things and greater things than him. Right. Patrick, I have a couple questions for you. Okay. I'm looking at your example that you sent of the stamp and certified copy of the non-UCC filing. Yep. And on your stamp, um, across the top of it, you have an IA number with US at the end. Is that a registered mail number? No. That's my address. Oh. Oh. I, oh, live, I, I live right there. Tells with that 13 digit number, okay? It's IA, two digits. Then it's got my nine digit zip code. Then it's got US. 
behind it. You add all those digits up. That's 13 digits. Right, okay. With okay. that 13 digits and that alone, I can put my name on an envelope and put that number there. Guess what? That mail could be delivered right to my door. Yeah. Because it says, the state of Iowa. My post office in the state of Iowa, my box number, okay, rural route box number, right. and then basically that I am in the country of the United States of America. Right there is your damn address. I don't need to put down uh, 1846th Street-208th dash Street Avenue, Sigourney, Iowa. Right. Yep. Okay. I didn't recognize it. Yeah, that see, that's what it is. And see, 13 digits. That is the number of man with his spirit. That is my 13 digits. The commercial yeah. world hates 13 digits. Registered mail number. RE plus nine digits plus US. How many digits? 13. The commercial world hates the number 13 because it puts you into a non-UCC capacity. They even leave that floor off on some buildings. Yeah. Yeah, and you go okay. out to Vegas, there is no 13th floor. That's There is no room 13. They skip the 13s because huh. it's unlucky to them. Yep. Okay, so my second question is, down in the collateral on your non-UCC, you say the Bailey is the Iowa Republic Civis Principality civilly alive. Now, I was looking at Bailey, Baylor, and the Baylor is the one that gives the personal property, and the Bailey is the receiver. Right. So, if we have the civilly alive as the Bailey, it seems like well, I'm thinking of in the credit creditor debtor world, all credit has to be returned to the creditor. Okay, it's but see that's not what we're doing here. Right. It's We've here. already bailed we've already bailed our assets by our sig nature, by our shadow autograph, okay, our signature over to the Bay Lore. So that was already done. Now is what we're doing on these UCC contract trusts is the Bay Lore, our fictional person, our signature, our shadow person, is giving everything back to us. Oh. Okay? I, okay. And then the same thing holds true on the 926 form. The Social Security person is giving everything back to us by way of our uh, 98 series EIN person to deposit it into the DuJour Bank in Philadelphia. Okay. Do you know where they See are? how it fits? Yes. Now I do. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, I, I like those that sticker that you have on the non-UCC. Where can I get a sticker like that? Where can I get a roll of stickers like that? Or do I need to uh The stamps, order for those are global stamps. They are a universal stamp from the post office, and they cost an R15. You can either get the moon stamp or this North American global stamp. Oh, cool. Okay, North American global stamp. Okay. Yeah. Now that some post offices don't have the North American one, they have the the Moon Global Stamp, and uh, there's several others out there too. But uh, they have uh, global stamps, 
uh, and they're forever. But right now they they were uh, initially some of them that I bought were a dollar twenty, but they dropped the price back down uh, to a dollar fifteen. Uh, was the last ones that I got. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just bought. I just bought some last week, and they were a dollar fifteen. Okay. Patrick, there's a date in the center. How did that get there? Huh? The I went to Staples, and basically they had a stamp that basically uh, has a date in the middle that comes out in red. And then basically uh, they had a couple extra items that you could put on uh, there to uh, say buy uh, with a line and one other one that just had a line. So I put those on to uh, the stamp, and uh, then basically I've got what I need. And it cost $25 or something like that to get that stamp. It's already pre-made up. You have reached the maximum time permitted to record. To send your message, press 1 at any time. To listen to your message, Done with that. Patrick, you also emboss your, your documents, don't you? Some of them I do, some of them I don't. Now, I did on the, these last ones because even the certificate of live birth, I went ahead and embossed it because basically that's going to be the last time that document's going to be used. Hmm. So I don't care whether it's voided out or not because it's going to be terminated. Now, in liquidating your contract trust, there's a balance which goes forward. Is there any idea how much that balance could be, or will you ever know? I don't give a shit. As long as as long as it's more than you can spend in three lifetimes, what do you care? When if I'm going to get an unlimited debit card from the treasury, I don't give a shit what goes over there from the commercial side. Why would I worry about it? Why would Good you point. worry about it if you're getting an unlimited debit card in return for giving everything up? That's a card one would not want to lose. You're right. You wouldn't want to use, lose it. But you're going to get a passport. And see, that passport that you're going to get, you can turn around and take that passport... And if you're overseas or anything like that, go into the British or to the American consulate and basically use that passport to draw funds out, too. Oh. Uh -huh. You get a passport and you get a passport card. You'll also get a debit card that so you can go and hit any ATM machine out there. You've used the term private banker in the past. Is that still uh, going to be a... You have used the term private banker in the past. Is that something we are, are going to be doing in the future here? You are, are, are. You are a private banker. Just by declaration. Just by having a billfold in your back pocket. Did you not deposit something into that billfold? Absolutely. Okay. That's a bank. And you can withdraw. Just like you're a post office. You got a post down and you got a mailbox on it. You go down and you pull the mail out. You sort the mail. You throw some of it in the damn fire, you do something with the other stuff, and then you turn around and put some other shit back in the mailbox. You're a post office. You're the postmaster general of your own post office. So by having a billfold in your back pocket, you are the banker over that account in your back pocket. You're a private banker. Now, a woman calls it a purse. 
That's her private bank. Don't get too carried away. Keep things as simple as possible. K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. Think like a little child. That's what you were told how to read and understand the Bible. That's the problem. All, most all of you are adults and you've been totally screwed up and you don't know how to read like a little child anymore. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Yes, I have a question about the 98. Uh, I have many 98 numbers, actually, and I did them all, uh, well, not all of them. I did most of them as religious organizations, but I also have one that I did as a foreign grantor trust. Can the religious organizations be used, or should I strictly use the one that's a foreign I would get rid of those others. Terminate them. Okay. Just use the foreign grantor trust. Right. And how about the name on the 98? I would basically just wait until the men in black show up at your door and basically ask them. Okay. Okay? Ask the appropriate people that basically have all the answers. They will help you, but you have to ask the question. Right. That's the problem. Most people out here with their arrogance and everything never ask the question that needs to be asked to the right people. Try and get somebody else to basically tell them how this should work. Well, I don't have all the answers to all the questions. I can give you some feeling on some of these because they're in two of the obvious what the answer is. The people have gone so far, I mean, basically that's like doing the Tony Fisher King shit years ago and going out and getting 10 Social Security cards. You can only have one Social Security account at a time. So basically, all those other ones, basically, were all bullshit. They all had the same Social Security number on them. They just had a different number on the back, a different sequence number. So the account stayed the same. Where it was located at, basically, or the sequence number, changed on each one of them. So basically the latest one is the one that you have to use. I have a question. Yeah. You got the, uh, for the acknowledgement, you have the certificate of live birth. Does, um, does it matter whether you use your birth certificate or your certificate of live birth or, or what well, you understand? You have to use the state-issued or the county-issued certificate of live birth. That is what the trust is. The UCC contract trust is over that document. It's not over your hospital birth certificate with your feet on it. That was a commemorative, what they call a commemorative, but really that is your de jour document. That's in the private That never set up a trust whatsoever. That gave you your entitlements to access in the private. But the endorsement that you're doing is the one that goes for the UCC contract trust, and that is your certificate of live birth document, either issued by the state of or by the county of the state of.
Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, call tonight, Tom. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Good night. Say, Patrick. Night. Anybody there yet? We're here. Do you have you want to ask your technical questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, or could I speak to somebody in the morning? I'm uh, don't have much time before I got to go to work here, uh, and I just need a little help. Uh, well, with no, that. Ask, ask the pointed question so we can have it recorded here. I'd rather do it with everybody present. So what are what are you having problems? Okay. Well, uh, I'm just not. Um, I, I I signed up and I got on the Skype. Okay. I mean, okay. these, these are, these are going to be some very basic. Most people are going to just say, look, you know, I mean. Um, well, first, uh, when, you, when you signed up for Skype, did you sign in on the, uh, into your Skype account on the Skype page? Because if you did sign in, you will be permanent. If you didn't sign in, you will be a guest that will expire in about a day. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to go on a speakerphone here if I can. Okay, so go go on to the next question, Dad. You do have that issue about whether you became a permanent member. What is your next question? Hello? You're not answering his question. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, I just forgot to ask Patrick. Uh, uh, when we send these in to the to the UCC, whatever, are we sending our original documents or are we sending the copies? Because I understand what we're doing with the social and driver license and all that stuff after the fact. But but the initial certificate of live birth is is, is that is that one uh, going in? You, you look at the attachment list. He's sending in the original. He's sending in the original state-issued certificate of live birth, but he's sending in a copy of a Social Security card. All right. All right. Okay. Right, that's right. right in there. Look at the attachment on the cover letter. Okay. Attachment section on the cover. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, or is that it? Okay, I guess the other guy got lost. Very good. No, I'm not lost. I'm here. Are you here? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, right. sorry, I'm not lost. I'm trying to... Okay. Okay, I'm on Skype. It says sign in, okay? Uh, when, when you say you're on Skype, where are you on Skype? Okay, I'm, I I went to their website, and it says sign in. Okay, okay. you you hit the, the join link that got to Skype? I have a password. Does, does that help you at all? Yeah, I want to know how you got to that window. Are you uh, you uh, uh, click the join link to get into the group, and then took you to Skype window? Because if no, that's what I just did, I just went to Skype dot com, and I came up to Skype right now. No, that's not the way. You, that's not the way you join as a permanent member. You have to have the join link first. And okay. you have to go to the welcome email to get that join link. Okay, well, where do I get the welcome email? You go to the Yahoo. It's sent out every other Sunday, and I think that it would be sent out next Sunday. But or you could also go to the Yahoo group, and in the main section, there's a welcome dot text. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, and that, will give, that will give you the. It will tell you that how you have to sign in. If you just click the join link, then you sign into Skype, then you just join the conversation. If you just click the link and join the conversation, you're a guest. You're not permanent. Okay, so I go to Yahoo. What? Is this the, Yahoo the Yahoo group? Yeah, the Yahoo We the People shareholders group. Our group. Our Yahoo group. 
Okay, I say I'm not. I'm not familiar with your group. My my name is Tom. I'm not familiar with your group. I was given the number through another club I'm in. They said I needed to get on this immediately, so I'm coming in through a phone number. So I, I I'm not in the normal procedure. That's why I was uh, trying to figure out okay. how to get in there. You've got to join the Yahoo group. Make sure you are a Yahoo member first. That you have a okay. Yahoo account. Okay, so I go to what? What is the web link I go to that then, or what's the site I go to? Well, yeah, I, I could tell you. Uh, it's just easier. There isn't a, a link that's easy to do this. You basically make sure you're a member. Then go to yahoo.com. When you get to yahoo.com, there's a horizontal menu. Uh, and uh, in that menu, it will say groups. Click groups. Yeah. That will, yeah. that will open up a search box for you. It put in okay. we the people, we the people, underscore shareholders, all one word, no spaces. We the people, underscore shareholders. Okay. okay. That, that will then take you, it will list all the groups, pick the pick our we the people, underscore, because there's a bunch of groups that begin with we the people. Okay, That's we it. the people, shareholders. Okay, underscore shareholders, That's us. Okay, and then uh, it'll, it'll list that one, click, click that one, hit the join button, Tell them, tell them your email preferences uh, that you say say you want every individual email. The welcome email will be sent to you. Oh, okay. So that's that's what I, if I just do that now, then they'll get me in. I will, okay, okay. I appreciate that. I'll uh, take a stab at it. Okay. So okay. go, go to Yahoo. Be, be a member, Yahoo member. Go to yahoo.com. Click, click groups. Search the search underscore shareholders. And mm -hmm. when that comes up, click on that one, hit join, set your email preferences. Okay, sounds good. Okay, all right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, very good. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.